Can somebody say amen? amen. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? Amen. Praise the Lord. It is always a blessing to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. To be back in God's house to serve him. Uh, some people didn't make it from last week, but you are here this morning. God is faithful. God is great that you can be in his presence one more time. Can we just raise up our hand and tell him thank you? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises will continually be in my mouth. I will make my boast in the Lord. God is good. It's always a blessing to be here at Ebenezer, a great church. Praise the Lord. I take my hat over to my good friend, Dr. Tafla. I really salute you. You're doing a great work, Pastor Chris. God continue to bless you all. You are doing a great work here in Minnesota and around the world. I'm so happy that I know you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Uh, to the leadership of this church, the deacons, trustees, you know who you are. God bless you all. You all are doing a great work here. Uh, you're doing a great work here in Minnesota and around the world. And God will not forget that. God will continue to bless you all. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I'm so happy to be here, uh, you know, to see what you all are doing. Praise the Lord. We had a good conference. Amen. On Saturday. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, we were here to see men worshiping God, you know, dancing and, and praising God. Uh, I mean, they were rejoicing in heaven. Amen. To see men worshiping the Lord. I take my hat off to you guys. Happy Father's Day, men. Let's give it up for all the men. Let's give it up for them. Praise the Lord. Happy Father's Day. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I'm here with my beautiful wife. Praise the Lord. Amen. The most beautiful woman in the world. Uh, we've been married. We've been married 37 years. She don't even look at 37 years. December 17. We've been together for 37 years. But the boyfriend, the girlfriend, I would say 42 years. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But I bless God for her. Amen. She just graduated with a doctorate degree, a DMP, doctor of nurse practitioner. Very proud of her. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 In ministry, you can't do ministry by yourself. You don't have a good partner. She's been a good partner for 37 years. Praise the Lord. I'm so blessed to be here. I'm just happy. The service, the song they just sung for us, grateful. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I don't know about you, but where God has took me from, I'm grateful. Praise the Lord. I'm grateful. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve to be here. Somebody passed away. But God kept you. Not because of your righteousness. Not because of your beauty. Because of God's mercy. That he kept you. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. On this Father's Day, we, we bless God for all the men on this Father's Day. We want to talk to you. The scripture was read for us from the book of 2 Kings chapter 20. Uh, and a lot of you are familiar with this story about Hezekiah. Praise the Lord. I want to talk to you today the power of a father's prayer. I mean, our wives, women can pray. But when a man stands in the in the, in the way, when a man stands in the way and pray and, and talk to God, God listen, praise the Lord. So the theme is the power of a father's prayer. Let's look to God in prayer. Dear God, we bless you. We thank you so much for this opportunity. We thank you because you are a good God. And Father, as we speak, I pray that you use your servant for your glory. If somebody don't know you, will come to know you. I pray if a father is struggling, Lord, that you will help that father, someone here, that it will come closer to you. Use your servant for your glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The text that was read for us in the book of 2 Kings is about a man called Hezekiah, praise the Lord. And you know the story, it goes like this, that 
the Bible says that Hezekiah got sick. I don't know about you, but uh, once upon a time, I, I got really sick that I ended up in a hospital. And I was there for about three days. And when you're sick, a lot of things go through your mind. Because you don't know if you'll make it. Do I have a witness here? Anybody been sick? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you know what I'm talking about. The Bible said that Hezekiah got sick. And he's struggling with his sickness. And the Bible said the man of God, Isaiah, walked into his house. And, and, and you, you would think that as I would come with good news that we were, you would be healed. He said, no. He said, no, this sickness that you have will kill you. You will die. Like your pastor coming to your house and said, God told me to tell you this sickness, you're coming out of it. That will kill you. You will be devastated. The Bible said, Hezekiah, I was devastated. And, and, but the, the, the man of God says something, and, and I want to stop a little bit and, and talk about it. The man of God told Hezekiah, said, you will die. This sickness will kill you. But you need to put your house in order. Let's just stop right here for a minute. He said, I, I, I want you to put your house in order because you will die. And, and I come to say as fathers and as men, God is saying to us that we need to put our house in order. Sometimes we look at this text and we, we think is that, well, the man will die that he needs to be a, change his life, be a Christian. No, Hezekiah was a man of God. When you read chapter 18 and, and come to 20, Hezekiah knew God. He worshiped God, and, and you will tell from his prayer. But he said, put his house in order. And this conference we just had on Saturday talks about a lot of things about putting a house in order. We talked about men should love their wives. We talked about men should be dependable. We talked about men should have be a role model for their family, for their children. We, we talked about that. And we talked about getting insurance, praise the Lord. When we talk about putting your house in order, put your affairs in order, praise the Lord. Your finances. Some of us, some of us our finances are terrible as fathers. Put it in order. Get your credit right. Get life insurance for your family. There is something happening to you, your children will be taken care of. When I talk about life insurance at my church, the typical African men will say this. I should get life insurance. So when I die, then the woman will marry a new man and they will enjoy my money. That thinking need to stop. Put your house in order. Get Life insurance, whatever you can get, that somebody will be taking care of. Praise the Lord. Put your marriages in order. The marriages might not be good. Things might be shaky between you and mama. Put it in order. I don't know what, I know what they told a man of God to put his house in order. But you know what you need to put in order. I might not know, but you know what you need to put in order. Set it right. Get it straight. Your school, whatever it is, set it in order. God is saying, I want you to make it right. When he told Hezekiah to put his house in order, being Hezekiah and the man of God that he was, he said, no, I got to go to God. I, I know you told me that this sickness will kill me, but I need to go to God in prayer. The Bible said, when you look at chapter 18 of 2 Kings and chapter 20, Hezekiah was 39 years old. He was 39 years old. In other words, if he was going to die, it was going to be a premature death. A 39-year-old don't need, to, don't need to die. So the Bible said that Hezekiah went to God. The Bible said, when you heard the news, the man of God, he was just a messenger. He delivered the news, and he turned his back. He would start going. And Hezekiah turned to God and turned to the wall. And the Bible said he begins to pray. He begins to talk to God. You listen to his prayer. He said, I, I want to read what he said. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, and he prayed to the Lord. He said, Lord, I want you to remember me. I don't know about you, but I want God to always remember me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let God remember you. He said, Lord, remember me. You know the man on the cross, the man, the thief on the cross when he died, he told, he told, he told you, he said, when you, go into your, when you go into paradise, remember me. I don't know about you, but I want God to remember me all of the time. 
He said, Lord, I want you to remember me. He said, Lord, and this, I don't want, Hezekiah wasn't trying, to be, wasn't trying to be cocky or boastful. He said, Lord, now I have walked before you faithfully. Okay, let me tell you what Hezekiah was doing. When you go to court, a professional lawyer, a good lawyer, will make his case to the judge. They will have jury, the judge will be there, and he will make a case. What Hezekiah was doing, he was making his case to God. He said, Lord, I, I, I know you said I would die, but I have walked faithfully. I have done everything you have told me. What is your case? What case will you make to God in the situation that you find yourself in? What case? What will be your case? Your case can be, don't, don't be copy. Yeah, I always, I was always in church on Sunday. I was always a giver. When it time to give you money, Lord, I give to your work. Lord, I've been good to my wife. I've been good to my family. Make your case. What would be your case? One thing you can tell God when you're praying. What's that one thing? What's that one thing you can make? That you can stand on. I'm not perfect. But I can stand on this. That's God, when it comes to your church work, when it comes to everything that you have called me, I'm faithful. The Bible says Hezekiah made his case. And he began to pray. He was crying. He began to pray. I, I, I want to talk to you about prayer a little bit. He began to pray to God. I want to tell you something about prayer. Can somebody say amen? amen. I want to tell you, Hezekiah, there, there, there's some things about prayer. When you pray, prayer is a preventer. Somebody say preventer. preventer. Things that the devil is cooking up. But when you are praying, amen. When you are praying, the Bible said, no weapon form against me shall prosper but if you don't pray that weapon will prosper when you begin to pray when you begin to pray you begin to talk to God that weapon will not prosper because prayer is a preventer in other way the devil is cooking the enemy is cooking but because you pray it will prevent it from happening can somebody say amen, amen. you need to pray we don't know what will happen tomorrow but I pray today so when the enemy is ready, it will not come to pass. Prayer is a preventer. Another thing that I want to tell you, prayer is a covering. Somebody say covering. covering. Let me demonstrate this to you. I know you're wondering what I'll do with an umbrella and there's no rain. When it's raining, when it's raining and you don't have an umbrella, what happened to you? You do what? You get wet. And in America... They are so sophisticated that the, the weather forecaster will tell you that it's going to rain. So you prepare to take your umbrella. Prayer is a covering. Prayer will cover you. That when it begins to rain, because you have been prayed up, you have talked to God, you are covered. Somebody said, pray is my covering. Fathers, you need to cover your children. Cover your family. I don't know about you, but I live in Texas, right? I live in Texas. A couple of years ago, there was a mass shooting at a school in Texas. Mass shooting. Some lunatic came into the school and shot up the school, killed the students. Cover your children before they leave the house in the morning. You will pray and you will cover them with your prayer. It might be your child in that school. Just your child, your only child in that school. But because you are praying for that school, when the end of it come, he will pass over because you pray for your child. Because you pray for your child. That school is covered. Prayer is a covering. Cover. We travel. Before you get on that plane, pray and ask God. Cover yourself with prayer. Cover your family with prayer. Cover your children with prayer. Cover your wife. Cover your church with prayer. It's a covering. You can't go without it. Hezekiah knew that. And he began to pray. He began to pray. He said, God, I've stood faithfully. I've walked. Something about prayer. Prayer is your secret service. Okay, secret service. Okay, secret service. The protection to give the president. Three or four weeks ago, Joseph Walker visited Texas, and he came to our church. 
God would take you places. The president came here, right where we were talking. But the secret service was there. And at the end of his talk, we were taking pictures. And I could see the secret service, all the, these white guys that stood and said, no, no, no. You can't just come close to the president. They were protecting the president. Amen. I come to tell you, I want four or five minutes to get up. Four, come on, come on, get up. I want four, come on, show me, do something for me. This is what prayer will protect you. The enemy, I want you to make a circle. Hold your hands. Hold me. Okay, fine. Prayer will pro give you protection. I want somebody to come to try to break this. This Try. Jack, don't try. Don't, don't push too hard. You, 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 you got to protect. Prayer is your protection. It's your secret service. So when the enemy is trying to come to you, try to come in. You can't come in. Prayer will protect you. Are you understand what I'm saying? You don't have money to get secret service. But God will, thank you guys, thank you guys. God will dispatch his angels. Your personal secret service will protect you. Prayer is a protection. Can somebody say amen? amen. Prayer will protect you. Let me tell you what prayer will do for you. And what happened to this man in this passage? How many people watch football in the NFL? Okay, we got some good, so you might understand. Ladies, if you might understand, listen. When you're playing football, the ref might make a call. A call against your team. But the call will not sit good with the coach. So what did the coach? The coach would do what? He would throw a red flag. He would put a red flag on the field, right? And the call goes to New York, and they would look at the call on the replay, right? And the call will come back. And the what they will do, they will reverse the call. I want to tell you, when you pray to God, when the enemy is cooking, God is able to reverse it. God can reverse it. What the enemy meant for evil, God can turn it for good. The call was reversed. Because the coach made a bad, the ref made a bad call. I come to tell somebody that when you pray, God can reverse your situation. It can be reversed. It can be changed. That's not your final destiny. That sickness will not kill you. That situation will not put you in the place that, that the people will not... Re but I want to tell you, that's why David said this. And I love it because David was a man of prayer. He said, yeah, do I walk. Yeah, do I walk. To the veil of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, they come from me. He said, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of my enemy. Prayer will do that for you. So the Bible said, Hezekiah began to pray. He said, God, I have walked faithfully. So the men of God now, the men of God walk into the third, the other code. There are about six positions. And the Bible said, he said, no, 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 no. Hezekiah, just pray. I'm going to reverse the call. I'm going to turn it around for him. I want you to turn around and go back to Hezekiah and tell him that he will live. He will not die. If God can do it for Hezekiah, he can do it for you. He can do it for me. He can reverse it. Say, Hezekiah, you're going to live for 50 more years. You're going to live for 50 more years. Don't worry. The same God I sent me to you, the same God reverse it for you. Praise the Lord. And Hezekiah said, wow. In that moment, he said, in three days. But I, I, when you look at this text, and, and we that are believers, Sometimes when God blesses us, we forget about the church. The Bible said when Hezekiah, that three days, Hezekiah went into the house of the Lord. Are you understand what I'm saying? When you're not pray, and you're not, God has reversed it. God has made it possible. God has protected you. God has covered you. Then you come into his house, and you testify. You come into his house, and you show your appreciation what God has done for you. Hezekiah went into the house of the Lord. David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Does it stop there? What did it say? I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in God's house forever. 
That's what prayer will do for you. I admonish you fathers to pray for your children. Pray for your family. Pray for your wife. Pray for your people. Pray for your church. And see what God will do in your life. Let's stand to our feet. As we stand here today, we're in church. Everybody don't know the Lord. Sometimes you can be in church, but the church not in you. You can be in the church, but the church, the church not in you. So you leave from here, in the marketplace, in the store, we don't know. If you're even a believer. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, you can accept him just one time. One time. Not twice. You can backslide, but you can rededicate your life to the Lord. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, now is the time to come. We've got ministers, pastors here that will meet you. If you hear this Father's Day Sunday and you don't know the Lord, you can come and somebody will lead you to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give God a hand clap of praise. If everybody here is a believer, praise the Lord. Amen. We, we pray for the fathers. You may be seated. If you're a father, I want you to remain standing. If you're a father, remain standing. I know the stage. If you're a father, just remain standing. Just fathers. If you're a father, a father mean you did something. And a woman got pregnant. And she delivered. You're a father. Amen. I want to pray for you. Like I said in the first service, being a father is not easy. It's not easy on our jobs, in the marketplace, in this world. Being a father and being a black man in America is not an easy job. I pray for you that God will protect you. That God will give you the desire of your heart. That whatever you do, you will be successful. Amen? In the name of Jesus. That you'll be their father. You'll be their role model for your children. There is no other role model out there but you for your children. Your children are watching you. They're watching you. I will pray for you that you'll be their father that God wants you to be. God is not asking for perfection. God just wants you to love him. Love your family. Love your wife. Love your children. Be there for them. Be dependable. They can count on you. Give them praises. Praise your children. When they come over an A or B or C, tell them you appreciate them. Praise the Lord. Let's pray for these men. If you can stretch your hands, those that are saying, just stretch your hands towards these men, all of these men. Just stretch your hands towards them. Dear God, we stand here today. You said it is not good for man to be alone. You said that when you made Adam. Father, I thank you for all of these men that are here, these fathers. I lift them up to you. These fathers, especially the men of Ebenezer, the men that come to church here, that worship here, those that are visiting, fathers, I lift them up to you. Father, I pray for protection. I pray for their success. I pray for their prosperity. Father, I pray, Lord, that you will bless them. Oh, God, we say thank you. I thank you for these men. I lift them up to you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.